Okay, so we are about to begin the last talk of the day, the last talk of the second day of our workshop, by Victor Espinosa. Dr. Espinosa has a Bachelor in Science degree in Audio and Acoustical Engineering from Universidad Tecnológica Vicente Pérez Rosales in Santiago, Chile, and a PhD degree in Electronic Engineering in Biomedical System from Uni Universidad Técnica Federico Santa Maria, Valparaíso, Chile. He's an associate professor, director of the Voice Research Laboratory or Voice Lab, DSON, of Departamento de Sonido, Universidad de Chile, Santiago, Chile. He's also principal investigator of the Fondesit project, Glotal Aerodynamics Estimated from Inverse Filtered Neck Surface Vibration in Subjects with Phonotraumatic and Non-Phonotraumatic vocal hyperfunction, funded by Agencia Nacional de Investigación y Desarrollo, ANIF de Chile. In 2015, Dr. Espinosa was a visiting researcher at the Center for Laryngeal Surgery and Voice Rehabilitation at the Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH Voice Center, in Boston, United States. His research focuses on studying the human voice in the context of voice pathologies, using signal processing, voice modeling, statistical analysis, and learning algorithms. Since 2012, he has been collaborating in the development of the Voice Health Monitor, VHN device, a daily use ambulatory monitoring device based on smartphone technology and uh, a neck skin accelerometer with researchers from Universidad Federico Santa Maria, Harvard University, and CSAIL MIT at the Vocal Hyperfunction Clinical Research Center in Boston, USA. So thank you very much, Victor, for thank being you. with us. And please go ahead. Okay, my turn. Well, thank you very much again for the invitation. It has been great to be here and see all the talks. So I just want to tell my story with this. This, this story is it's called Vocal Hyperfunction Assessment Using uh, Acoustic Modeling and Signal Processing. Uh, let's start. Well, this is my usual presentation, but I think uh, Marcelo tell all about this. So, uh, well, my, my research is focused on, on the clinical side. The side. I, am, I am engineering, but I always see in this time, what's happening in the clinical side with this, in this case, with this voice pathology. We have some data here from the USA, how this pathology affects, uh, in general, the adult population. In this case, 30% of the adult population. We have some data from, from Chile. We, we have 50% of prevalence, for example, in teachers, no school teachers. and. Uh, one of the uh, main reasons that we found for this kind of uh, behavior in, in, in our population is that it's some, in somehow it's, it's somehow is the excessive you know energy formation or somehow incorrect vocal fold posture. That's this in, in, in some sense our hypothesis. And that hypothesis we refer to that hypothesis in a condition that we call vocal hyperfunction. There is a framework, there is a clinical framework that is trying to be validated with this. Uh, and this is, a, a, in, in that sense, uh, that framework, vocal hyperfunction framework, with recently, 2019, was published with Bob uh, Hillman groups, uh telling us what what happened in, in the clinical side with this kind of uh, voice behavior so they classify uh two vocal behaviors that we call it. one of them is phonotraumatic vocal function and the other one is non-phonotraumatic vocal function I, i'm not going into the details because this is very clinical but, but one of the things that is worth to mention is for the 
monotromatic vocal factor hyperfunction, we can see visible lesions in the vocal folds with an endoscopic, you know, uh, clinical, you know, uh, uh, in a clinical setup. And the other one is the, with the non monotromatic vocal hyperfunction, we don't see any physical lesion, but we see an incomplete glottal closure. Vocal folds don't collide in, the, in, that, in that case. So this is our two main uh, classification of this vocal behavior. Vocal hyperfunction is, is not a pathology itself, it's a behavior that leads us, the hypothesis is that leads us to very several vocal, vocal pathology. So the idea behind all of this research is map in some point of the in a healthy voice and a pathological voice, this path is the vocal hyperfunction. So we need to detect early in the development of these pathologies some of this, the signs of, of these two types, uh, non phonotraumatic and phonotraumatic, to detect in, in the early stage. So we can go, uh, establish some therapy or detect some clinical um, intervention in, in, that, in that regard. Okay. Well, I put always this kind of slide to to see the context of this. Uh, this is the usual, you know, endoscopic examination for see the vocal folds and detect these two type of vocal functions, vocal hyperfunctions. And the and this uh, other uh, theories try to tell you, uh, you know, the complexity of the problem. There is a several, you know, part of the vocal folds. There is a plenty of muscles that activate for a correct posture. So the problem is very complex, but the examination is very simple. It's visual, it's simple, it's only from this position up to this. And we obtain a very simple signal. So we, we are not saying see the whole information. Okay? So it's difficult for clinicians to see what is happening with the voice of the person. So they use not only vocal uh, endoscopic, uh, this kind of uh, diagnosis, but also the ears to see, to hear the sound of the voice and collect that information and have some clinical intervention in the patients. This, another slide show us uh, what is the problem in terms of that show us a very complex, you know, mucosal way to extract information for that. There is a plenty of effort, in, for example, in Matthias' group of, with uh, uh, high-speed video, but there is a complexity, complexity in this kind of, uh, you know, uh, dynamical system in this case. Okay. So, what is the role of the part of, of the, the engineering side of this? How we can see this problem? Uh, in, in my opinion, we need to see the problem in, in a simple way and then add complexity. So, we have this very simple model of uh, a, a simplified voice production model. Uh, with uh, we have the vocal folds, vocal tracks, radiation and the resulted radiated pressure traveling across the vocal tract. This is a linear system. This is our first tool for analyzing what is happening in, in this physical problem. And we obtain this kind of signals. Uh, vocal folds, in this case, vocal tract, frequency response, and how is all of the 
the interaction with the uh, vocal tract occurs in the glottal pulse and the frequency response. We can see in this case a density of harmonics here for this probably uh, sustained vowel. We we have some resonance very uh, correlated with the frequency response. And so what uh, some uh, 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 many other things we can do with this with, uh, with this type of model. But the model is very simple. It's linear. They have some uh, complexities, some difficulties, but it's one of our first tools. And this is one of, in terms of mathematical models, this, this equation tells us at least this is the model for one of these poles. It's very simple. And um, the other uh, tool that we have for analyze this, this problem is using numerical models. In this case, I think this is the, if I remember, this is the, the the, the model from incomplete glossal crochet. In, in this case, the three mass model this is an uh, animation of, of that. And this is this this image is very interesting for me uh, in terms of what is happening with with the vocal poles and the glottal poles. If you remember in the in this slide, this is a very idealized glottal poles. This model is for, in general, is using for synthesizers in the in the telephone uh, era and in the seventies. This is called the Rosenberg uh, model. But uh, we can see here that that model is not the same based in, in the physics. We don't have a, a very clear, you know, close page. Uh, we have some uh, probably some interaction with the a focal track here. So it's, it's a very realistic way to see this 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 little this little pose here. So we have another information with this layer of physical system. We see some some things which is very related to, to the other model, but what happened here we don't know. The other layer for this is in terms of the physics or engineering part, is the is the, the vocal track acoustic model, which is always a very simplified model, the frequency domain based in electrical circuits, how to propagate uh, the, the uh, uh, how the frequency response of the vocal track is in stationary mode. Uh, for the same thing we can do for subglottal track below the glottis. There are several models for, for doing that. This is the most common model using the wave model uh, with all of this branch. And it's very complicated acoustic model with this kind of equations, it's iterative, it's, there is a computational cause associated with that. So it is, this is another layer of complexity of this, of this problem. There is a couple of the ideas that are surrounding this this problem. Um, another model which is uh, was uh, made with uh, the work of the PhD thesis of, of Matthias was uh, what happened with you know in the subwater region. This this sound here with the sound. And um, I want to talk in in next slide. What happened with this next skin acceleration? The sensor, very little sensor connected to the smartphone, is a possible solution for tracking uh, uh, sound of the of the global airflow in the globus. Okay. So this is this is some some of the ideas that surrounding this this kind of uh, of problem. So, what are the possible solutions using these ideas? Well, the solutions that we are doing for, for a while is to evaluate with several sensors. In this case, 
uh, our main tool for uh, assess the focal function is using this so-called Rothenberg mass or CD mass with several sensors. In this case, it would be uh, HR oral pressure sensor, the oral alcohol sensor. This mass is around the, you know, the mouth and the nose. And uh, we have some holes here and specific acoustic resistance to calculate the flow. Uh, we have this EGG signal, which is the electric lithographic signal, which is trying to quantify the focal flow closure. Uh, and we have this sensor, which is our prototype, and it's an signal in, in, in this region. And we collect all of that data in in, in a synchronized way, this is a uh, vocal gesture. It's pa, pi, pa, 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 consecutive pa, recording at the same time. So it's a, it's a time series, it's a multi-period time series. And uh, here at the top is the oral airflow with the sensor flow. This is the acceleration signal here. All with uh, physical units, in this case, flow is liters per second. In the ACE, the acceleration signal is centimeters per second to square. Uh, the microphone, in this case, this is the microphone here uh, in, in Pascal. Uh, the, the, the derivative of the EGG, which is very important signal to perform inverse filtering, this is involved. And the oral pressure, which is centimeters of, of water. So that is the kind of sensor that can, we can measure. What can I do with, with this, with this measure in, in this idea of voice assessment? Uh, this is our current setup for I, I think for at least ten years. Uh, again, sensor setup, signals, some preprocessing in, in this signal is performing, uh, and that. Kind of uh, preposition signal with one of the main and more important or key element for obtaining uh, what are waveforms in this case is using a technique called inverse filtering. Uh, and from that uh, signal and others, uh, derivative, other signals derivated for, from this one in time domain and frequency domain in and in. Chepstrom domain, I don't know if you know this kind of signal, we can obtain parameters from uh, from the voice. One of the, I want to mention one, one of them, this is the AC flow, which is the peak to peak signal, time basic signal like open portion, which is very relevant. Uh, MFDR, which is the negative peak of the time derivative, uh, time period, uh, the difference in this case of the Harmonics in this case, uh, fundamental frequency and, and and the second harmonic or CPP, which is the, the highest of this first harmonic. Other signals, this is all related to the variation of this signal uh, extracted from the oral airflow and from the accelerometer, maybe from the microphone also. And this one is are related to flow and pressure, which is Call it the low dimensional, uh, low dimensional uh, uh, measure. This is high, high bandwidth dimensional. This is the high, low bandwidth dimensional measures. And we think one of the uh, of those signals uh, is self rotor pressure, which is very important. And we obtain some kind. Of that can we obtain for 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 those signals okay this is the other the other part that we are using for, for a while which is uh, this technique called inverse filtering uh, in this case we're using two uh, technologies
This is one of uh, of the uh, proposed uh, models that I made in my PhD thesis in uh, which is a very simple extension of the well-known closed space inverse filtering from from our pool, uh, and we obtain we add our extension is this regularization uh, parameter here. Uh, uh, one of the uh, important things here is that all of the processes, you know, we obtain a final solution. There is no iteration in that. So <clears throat> we can obtain a, a, a closed form of the, of the, of the problem. Uh, this is one of, of, of I was mentioning this uh, for, for the information. Well, all of these tools we are trying to use them in a clinical context. In this case, we measure several patients and we need to uh, obtain information and, and see what's happened with our processes. Okay. So we create uh, this kind of tools. Uh, this is a very simple GUI in MATLAB uh, environment, uh, trying to centralize all of these ideas of all of these uh, models in this case we have uh, the signal we have uh, both inverse filter signal the time derivative the inverse filtering of the oral airflow here uh i bit in this section and optimization in maybe other process like filtering in this case uh visual assessment for uh the Frequency domain and phase uh, plot, what was mentioned before. And this kind of tool help us to understand what happened with this model and with this kind of thing. Uh, one of the things, the things that uh, I have not mentioned is that uh, IB uh, needs to uh, a specific uh, values of this of these quantities. Uh, this is our resistance, mechanical resistance of the skin here, the mass, the mass, mass of the skin, and the stiffness of the skin, which is subject specific. We need to obtain this parameter for, for each subject. And that's the idea of this graphic to obtain or find what parameters are for uh, uh, each of our, our subjects. If you see, this is the fit uh, between the the acceleration signal and the global airflow estimation of the global pulse. So, uh, uh, I will show you now some of the results using these tools. Uh, the main, the, the first result of this, this, these ideas is to was this this paper from 2017 when was a PhD student, uh, it's called Glottal Dynamics Measure in Women with Phonotraumatic and non phonotraumatic Vocal Hyperfunction. And the idea was to validate some of the initial results from Dr. Hillman and very seminal paper in 1989. Uh, we tested uh, 16 participants with phonotraumatic and other 16 participant with no phonotraumatic under control. We're using SNF inverse filtering. We measure these quantities, phase flow, peak to peak, uh, MFDR, open quotient, and this is subglobal pressure, instead of uh, sound pressure. 
and we tested using a multivariate uh, approach for, for this uh, uh, experiment. This is the, you know, the, uh, all of the steps for performing the experiment. We record the signal, we see this kind of buoy that I mentioned before. We obtain parameter from the global uh, airflow and parameter from the other sense. And we collapse all of this in this kind of uh, uh, normalized uh, measures uh, using uh, and some kind of, you know, ratio between SPL and the aerodynamic measures. Uh, and the results are here. This is the main result of the, of the project. Uh, we obtain uh, significant, significant statistical difference between control of PVH and controls and non-PVH. And in general, with this, with this kind of, uh, this upcoming T-square is similar to to a T test, a student T test, but uh, using a multivariate approach. And then we disseminate what happened with all of this measure in that case. And we found that the lot of pressure was the most salient feature. Second was the open question, which is time, this time, uh, uh, time basic uh, measure, which is was. Uh, uh, very surprising for us in that time. So, local pressure was expected in that case. We, that was uh, effectively was was salient in the study, but of course it was was surprising for us. Unfortunately, this kind of measure, AC flow MFDR, which is basically the amplitude of the signal, don't show us, and uh, at least for this study, very very uh, power discrimination between controls and and vocal hyperfunction. A second study using, in this case, uh, data. Well, this study is, is made in, in laboratory conditions using this gesture pa, pa, pa. The second study that we measure is from 2018 and leading by Juan Pablo Cortez using ambulatory data in this case. Uh, we performed this in 48 patients for seven days. Uh, using the smartphone and the accelerometer here, we calibrated, we measured each patient in, 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 in laboratory, in clinical, in, in, in lab. And uh, these are uh, the results. It, this is the same image that Matthias showed us in his presentation. Uh, one of the main results is that uh, the best model was, very two best models to classify this. Which is the super vector machine? The support vector machine, I'd say, uh, and the logistic regression using this one uh, full frame. Uh, we obtained this kind of result, which is are, are good, but not so great. But uh, they're very consistent across the whole calendar of, of uh, uh, evaluation of, of, the, of the classification. Which is uh, very good news in, in, in that in that in uh, that experiment. This is the first experiment using ambulatory monitoring uh, data. Uh, this is another study uh, using the acceleration signal and all of these tools that I mentioned, which is estimate uh, trying to estimate from the acceleration signal again this little sensor. Uh, in this case, estimates the global pressure. Why is the global pressure is so important? Because we found in the previous study that is uh, relevant, the most relevant quantity. So we're trying to estimate from the acceleration signal. Uh, and we find some correlations. So global pressure is here, the acceleration signal is here, the rough signal that would mean square value, and obtain some correlation for uh, different voice qualities. What is new in this in this study? We include the inverse filtering signal uh, and and possible and all of this measure in this case CPT, H1, H2, basic flow and MFDR to improve the accuracy of the of the prediction. And this is the experiment performing several parts with a amplitude flight or 
uh, decreasing the amplitude, uh, we measured total pressure and all of the other signals from this segment. And we tested several uh, 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 models on this using uh, uh, a best uh, a selection approach, uh, including or excluding some of these data to avoid, you know, overfitting in, 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 in the models. These are the results. The main the take home message here is that we reduced the error from the previous estimation of total pressure for a 25% using the accelerations. This is the progression of the reduction when uh, incorporating the, the acceleration sink. Uh, in this another study, we uh, made exactly the same experiment. This is very rare in, in science because we, we performed exactly the same same experiment that in our paper in 2017, this scan, this, 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 this paper. When we recorded this, this data, also, we recorded the acceleration signal at the same time. But uh, in 2020, we included that signal if you compare with the uh, signal from the oral airport to see how good is the acceleration signal in front of the oral airport signal. So the participants are the same, the city are the same, the controls are the same. Uh, but we include, in this case, the acceleration signal. The testing, the, the, the statistical testing is the same. This is uh, one of the previous results uh, for performing the final, final, final task of this experiment. Uh, uh, first of all, we, we see what happened with the uh, inverse filtering of ACC signal using IV in this case. There is a good agreement. We are okay with that. And then one of the things which is uh, 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 we can uh, be performing in that experiment was was possible to uh, uh, the previous study to estimate uh, some pressure level state and subplot of uh, pressure from the next skin acceleration level, which is the, the row signal of the acceleration, the RMS signal of this. So there is a very good fit in this case. Uh, so we can project from the next skin acceleration, the SPM and the of pressure for subject. This all models are for subject specific. And this is the results. And uh, we compared those results from the all past study from 2017. These are the multivariate results. This is kind of some, some of the effect size uh, using the test square of L test. Uh, and one of the uh, surprising results here is that the, our, the result from the acceleration signal, in two cases, using microphone signal or uh, using SPL from the back, from the SPL from the next skin acceleration signal, are better than the OBB signal. Uh, and almost in all cases, which is, was very surprising for, for us. And the other results as the subgroup of pressure, it, we can capture some of the information of the, in the acceleration signal uh, and obtain a very reliable <coughs> estimate of the pressure. The same thing with the auto quotient, but this is still not so good compared with the subgroup of pressure. So this, this result is very surprising. Um, uh, one of the things that that, that maybe it improved the results were the, this kind of regression that, in some sense, uh, eliminate uh, excessive noise of the of our our statistical test. And the last uh, result uh, in this <laughs> in this history is. Uh, about uh, using IV to uh, 
modeling, a, a very general model of, of filtering, which is called the ARMA model, the Auto Resistor Mean Average model, right now, uh, uh, based it on the physics of the IV, that we know the physics. This is the, all the questions of IV. And that equation leads, for example, this kind of simulation. Uh, in this case, if this is the, the response of the skin, this is the response of the, the, the acoustic response and the position of the acceleration signal. Uh, uh, this is the response from the subglobal system below the acceleration signal and all responses to collapse. Uh, what is the main message, message here? Uh, we have very complex interaction. There is zero, about ground zero at the sea. So that's are some of the problem with this. Um, what is the main idea of uh, transform IV physical model and to an ARMA model and at the same time uh, deal with the, one of the problem of IV. IV is a, it's a very good, uh, a very robust uh, uh, method to inverse filtering, but it's very, the application of course is very high, but because they need, uh, the model need to uh, calculate a, uh, a land model for each person. So, so we're trying to simplify that using this very simple path, which is from the basic, basic model, uh, trying to obtain a, a completely uh, digital model. And uh, as we call in this case, super pharma model uh, with all of this part. One of the, thing, the things that is very good of, of this model, which is, is linear, is very easy to interpret each of the uh, parts. And, and, and we tested in, in some of, uh, of the samples that we have. This is the general uh, fit for those models, which is very good in general. This is the, 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 the uh, block diagram for estimate again the, the parameters of the of the model in this case more poles and series in this case using uh, particles from optimization techniques and this is our the, the our preliminary results uh, first of all the fit of the blood and waveform is, is is very good and or have a good agreement with, with this example about uh, global poles and angle that we have a pole. And this is how the results from comparing the error mean and the error standard, standard error from, from the uh, waveforms and uh, from the parameters that we uh, often use. Uh, and we have some, some improvement compared to the in this case. Uh, uh, the same thing happens with the, the parameters, but the error is, 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 is partially true. And this is the last one. This is very fresh because this was published uh, last week. Uh, again, using all of these tools that I described uh, uh, on Pablo Cortez, in Lanet. Using all of these tools, he was uh, uh, was possible to estimate from the acceleration signal in ambulatory control setting the the, the subglobal pressure from all all day for all of these case, traumatic, non traumatic, and a couple of, of 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 other examples. The gradient is not perfect, but uh, it's very encouraging because there. Uh, there is a, a room for improvement here in the, all of these things. Okay, uh, my collaborators, this case is a big list. Collaborator, thank you for them. My funding resources, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victor, for your talk. Uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Ari, can you please? So, sorry. 
So flutter pressure? Yes. Well, we we using the Rothenberg mask for that, and, and a, a specific sensor, pressure um, an intraoral pressure sensor. We put this in a little, how oh, it called it? Yes, this little straw, intraoral tube. That when the the the, the participant perform pa, accumulate the pressure into the pa. And then uh, it's, it's measured those peaks, and we interpolate in between two points. It's the only way to the only way to measure uh, uh, of pressure is an estimation from the from the bottom of That's that's that that is our baseline for data. Yeah, it's not. So, I mean, it, you need to put the mass and and and, and straw. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Leo? Yeah. So, um, my question is about using this smart device for monitoring which Okay. Yes. Are you saying you can use this device in order to a screening previous to a more complex study? For example, okay. Yeah. Well, the idea of the, um, the ambulatory uh, device is to try to capture uh, voice behavior outside the clinic. In, in, in which a specific setup is is an open question, I think. But that we are we are we are uh, trying to study what happened with these people with uh, phonotraumatic and non phonotraumatic uh, vocal center function. In I think in two sets. One is diagnosis, and the other one is treatment. How what happened with the uh, specific treatment from the clinician outside the clinic? So uh, that I think is ongoing. That is from the clinician part. It's ongoing study for how to uh, quantify the signals in terms of uh, the in field settings for, for those. But it is, I think it is still still a question mark. What's the application specific application of this? Uh, obviously, we track other other measures, fundamental frequency, and to even uh, the response of the of the participant in in phone itself, the, the smartphone can ask you what's happening with your voice. You have to be careful. We are tracking uh, a high level of your voice, so there is a kind of real feedback uh, around the smartphone. So that's that's it. A completely separate uh, uh, setting for for treatment. That's. We are looking for uh, improve the, the aerodynamic measure. We are looking for uh, reducing the you know the uncertainties of, of those measure, and, and the other thing is validate that measure into the field. Uh, I'm thinking in other medical application. Yeah. We are working in sleep and apnea. Oh, in that case. Uh, and in, in that case, you have the the gold standard is to study in the lab with all the equipment and many sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the idea to put only one oximeter and take the signal from there okay. and try to detect which patients, which people go to the more complex stuff. Okay. Here I see that uh, the goal. Standard, I think, is to put all the group. Yeah, is that possible? Yeah. That is a little yeah, impressive. Yeah, impressive, yes. Uh, perhaps you can use this that is more simple device, cheaper, I think, uh, in order to predict which patients have. Well, I think it was, you need, you, you have some answer there because. Because Matthias, uh, former student, 
पर मुकर्चे I think it's I think it's that okay yeah Yeah, but in terms of the amnia, I think it... we 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 did that. Oh, wait, that was that was Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My bro. We could do we could do it with uh, with the uh, with the spinning. Yeah, yes, yeah. using machine learning techniques for process like, that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That position is like that big because it's, it's where you get the most flow and flows into the big thing. It's good, like, we don't have all sorts of rest of the rate conditions. We get in our framework what it says as well that has no flow. And you can do all sorts of So in that case, we will thank Victor again. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. So this is the end of the second day of our workshop. Tomorrow, 11 a.m., uh, we will have the first talk of our last day. So we'll see you uh, all tomorrow. Mañana a las 11 de la mañana es la primera charla del último día del workshop. Gracias.